Hey everybody, Peter Zion here coming to you from frosty Colorado and today we are going to pick back up with the demographic series. It's open-ended. I don't know how far we're going to go, but today we're going to talk about Europe. <clears throat> now, as with everything in Europe, whether it's culture or finance or politics or strategy or geography, every country is different. Every country has their own story, but you can break Europe into roughly four pieces. So uh, let, let's start with the, the optimistic side, France and the Scandinavian countries. Uh, these are countries that were a little late to the game when it came to industrialization, and they've proven far better at adapting to it. Part of this is geography. There's just a lot more elbow room in places like Sweden or France than there are in places like, like Germany or Italy. Uh, but there's a big policy component here as well. Uh, the Scandinavians plus the French are, have some very strong pro-natalist policies. And so while you may be paying 60% of your income as tax, you also have cradle-to-grave welfare support and especially child... Um, <sighs> Child care, there's the word I was going for, uh, for free. Uh, and in that sort of environment, it is very easy for people in their 20s to have families. And so you typically have children being born at a younger age and more children being born per couple. The Swedes have taken this the furthest in that they actually force the men in a relationship to take time off whenever a child is born in order to bond with their children. Uh, the result uh, is mixed in terms of some social policies because it really makes people less willing to hire young people and especially women, but it comes at the benefit of a much higher birth rate which stabilizes the tax base and the worker base over the long run. So, you know, you have to choose what you're going to sacrifice. Uh, anyway, these countries, even in the worst case scenario where their aging continues to accelerate, are still going to be here at the end of the century. And that's better than what you can say for the groups, uh, the countries that are in group number two. And this is the Germanocentric world, primarily Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, Austria, and Italy. These are countries that were part of an earlier wave of an industrialization that predates World War II, and they don't have nearly as much elbow room, and as a result, they're very heavily urbanized, productive economies, but there hasn't been room for children in these systems for decades. So it's not that the Germans and the Italians and the others are running out of kids. That happened 40 years ago. Uh, this decade, they are going to run out of working age re re adults. Uh, they've got a full inverted pyramid, and the bulge in that pyramid for all of these countries is beyond 50. It's already reaching into the 60s, which means that this decade, this entire zone ages into mass retirement and obsolescence. And we do not have an economic theory designed for what happens in a country where you no longer have children or young adults or mature adults, and it's all retirees. So we've always known that the German economic model was going to collapse before the end of this decade. It's just an open question of whether something else, whether it's a trade war, an energy crisis, or I don't know, a war with Russia, uh, speeds this process up. These are the countries that are going to vanish from the world by 2050. Group three uh, is a little bit brighter. These are countries that came a little bit late to the industrialization game for various reasons, and they are primarily the countries of Central Europe and Iberia. So let's start with the Iberians. Spain and Portugal were very late to the industrialization game. They existed in kind of a pseudo semi-industrialized dictatorship uh, under governments uh, until the 1980s. And it was only in the 80s that they really started to join the European family in the modern world. So they have a similar structure to what's going on in Germany and the Netherlands and the rest from a much later start. So their bulge is in their 40s instead of nearing their 60s. And as a result, these countries have at least another 20 years to go. Now, the problem here is that because they were late industrializers, their birth rates and their urbanization rights are changing more quickly than those really aged countries in Central Europe. Uh, and that's a real problem moving forward because it means by the time we get to 2060, these countries are just as doomed as the Germans are today. On the other half of that equation, you've got some countries that started even later, uh, primarily the Central European countries of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic. Uh, industrialization under the Soviet system in many ways echoed what we saw in Spain, and these countries really didn't start to develop in full until we got to the 1990s. Uh, the problem is it came late, so the birth rate drops were rapid. They still have a lot of people in their 30s. Their bulges are people in their 30s and into the early, early 40s. So these countries have at least another 20 to 30 years to go. However, 
one of the many aspects of the European Union is free movement of people under the Schengen Accords, which means that if you were in Latvia or the Czech Republic, odds are when you were in your 20s, you decided to decamp your home country and go work somewhere else in Western Europe because the pay was better. And so as long as you are transient like that, you're not having kids. So for the last generation, the young people in these countries really haven't repopulated. And even if they do decide to come home when they're in their 40s or even 50s, it's too late. They've missed the window for having children. So they are younger. They are experiencing faster growth. It is healthy growth. It's based on young workers. It's based on mature workers, all the normal things. But there's absolutely nothing coming up behind. There is no younger generation at all. So by the time you get to 2050, most of these countries will have simply been aged out. Now, the final group we're going to have to deal with in a different video because they're so fundamentally different from the first three, and that's the Orthodox world. Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania, Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. Here are countries where the numbers are so radically different, it just requires separate treatment. We'll do that next time. All right, see you then.